In those days, the demo records were like voice and piano. Somebody would write a song, they'd come in, play the piano, sing, and we'd do it on a little acetate and give it to them. And I think we charged them $10 or something at that point. And uh, so I was in the business about three months. And I was able to do these things. And I would come in on a Saturday. And we'd have two or three of those on a Saturday. No one would be around, no maintenance man or no... Uh, uh, no one else, just me. Uh, I'd answer the phones and do these little demos and collect the money, the cash, it was usually always cash, and, and give them their acetate and they'd be off. And at 2 o'clock, there was this thing booked for MRSA at 2 o'clock. So I was waiting around for MRSA to come. I had something at 12 and I finished that. And usually they were about a half hour, these things. And then 2 o'clock, the doors opened up and all these musicians started walking out from the elevator. And I said, what's going on? They said, they were, they were looking for the Mercer Records date. And I said, well, wait a minute, I think there's a mistake here. You know, this is supposed to be a little demo. Well, to make a long story short, it was the Duke Ellington band. It was for Mercer Ellington, uh, Duke's son. Uh, I had kept a notebook of all the sessions. You know, those little notebooks that kids took to school of diagrams of all the sessions and how how they set up in the studio, what microphones were used. And uh, so I said, look, there's a mistake. I tried to call my boss. I couldn't get him. I tried to call Tommy Dowd, who was my mentor and who was the chief guy there, engineer, and he, I couldn't reach him. So I was stuck with doing this. And uh, so I got my n notebook out and I sort of set up. I set everything up as quickly as I could. We only had a six input console in those days. And so there were only six mics to set up. I set those up. And it was the, the Ellington band, and uh, Duke Ellington couldn't play piano because it was not for Columbia Records, it was for Mercer's label. So they couldn't even call it the Duke Ellington band, but it was all the guys. As a matter of fact, Billy Strayhorn was a piano player, played piano. And that was my first date, and I kept apologizing to Duke Ellington, uh, saying, look, I'm not experienced enough, there's been a mistake, and this shouldn't have happened, I should have been, I, you know, I've never done this before. And he kept patting me on the knee, saying, look, don't worry about this, kid. We're going to get through this.